You're welcome back. Yesterday, there was a protest in uh, Imo State by the NLC in spite of the court injunction uh, placed against that. They held their protest in Imo, and the president, Joe Ajayro, was said to have been arrested and allegedly brutalized by security operatives. We have Mr. Chris Onyeka, Assistant General Secretary of NLC here, to give us first-hand information of what really happened in Imo State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Onyeka. Okay, so uh, let's hear firsthand what happened in Imo State and what the way forward is because of time. Let's, let's just group all this together. Uh, I didn't hear that question very well. Tell us what really happened in Imo State yesterday and what the way forward for NLC is. Can you hear me now? Yeah. And, uh, that the institutions of governance that we have in the nation cannot work in of Nigeria. Uh, we are not... But we are talking about the protection of Nigerian workers. Just a day, it was the day that organized labor in Nigeria Union Nigeria Congress and the Caribbean Congress of Nigeria and the demonstrate express their outrage over the way workers were treated by the state government, over the refusal of the state government to treat workers as human beings, over the 11 months of unpaid salaries. The declaration of workers as ghost workers, the, the uh, areas of gratuities, the violence and intimidation that was being used against Nigerian workers in the state, especially trade unions and trade union leaders. Uh, and so all we were saying was that the government must respect the outcomes of social dialogue. And even that had been reached in 2021, the one that was reached in May 2023 should be concluded by the state government. We were not gathering in our own secretariat. The secretariat of the nation in the United States to express ourselves. And the state governor sent his SA on special duties. One Mr. Waneri, Chinasa Waneri, led by the police uh, command. They came to where the president was inside the secretariat of the military. And and him and beating mercilessly. I'm talking about the police, aiding mm. and abetting violence in Nigeria against Nigerian workers and their leadership. That is unacceptable. That is not has ever happened anywhere in Nigeria. Even the, during the colonial times, it never happened. During the military dictatorship, it never happened. This is the first time it's happening in Nigeria. And it's unacceptable to us. We will take steps to ensure that it never repeats itself. And that was what happened yesterday. Okay, but NLC was threatening that um, if Ajayro is not released, the president is not released, there's going to be a strike. Everybody was put on alert. Uh, he has been released now, I take it. And what is the way forward after what happened? The way forward is simple and stress. The president was beaten and hospitalized. We have to take steps to ensure that the president is in good health. If anything, 
happened to the president as a result of that. The state governor and the Nigerian police force will be held accountable because they are responsible. So the organs of CEC and the Nigerian Labour Congress will meet in due course to decide on the way forward. There will be an emergency meeting of the next of NLC and TUC that may happen on Monday or Tuesday. And that particular organ will decide on the way forward. And when they are taking a decision, we will let Nigerians know. But one thing is for sure, that if what, what happened in the yesterday we will not go unpunished. It will not go without consequences. Crazy consequences. And that is the assurance we will give. Okay, but, but did the government or the governor make any any statement? Did the governor make any statement to NLC? Was there any 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 comment from government house? We are not interested in any comment the governor is going to make because the only comment he will make will be lies. Just like the police will also issue a tissue of lies to try to come up to defend themselves. But I am a living witness, an eyewitness, because I was there from the beginning to the end. We were in our house, in our own secretariat, when they came to attack us. The police came to attack us in our own secretariat. Inside our secretariat, that's an abomination. And it's not acceptable. And we protect ourselves legally and within the traditions and practice of industrial relations. Okay, Mr. Onyeka, we would like to... So thank you for your time this morning. We know that you are traveling. Um, we uh, hope and pray for journey messages uh, to you, uh, for you. Thank you so much for your time. We're talking with the Assistant General Secretary, NLC, Mr. Chris Onyeka, who was bringing us uh, up to speed. Uh, what happened in Imo State yesterday? He confirmed that... Uh, uh, the, the president of NLC, Joa Jero, was attacked or was arrested, assaulted, and we've seen some pictures to buttress that fact. And he has said that the NLC and TUC will have a joint meeting on Monday or Tuesday to decide on the next action. But he said emphatically that this action will not go without consequences. I wonder what those consequences will be. And it's also a very dicey situation for uh, the governor of Imo State, who already uh, had issues even coming into, uh, into office. And now, a few days, just about 10 days to election in that state where he is seeking re-election. This is happening. And that is really a bad name. I, I don't know how he's going to navigate the waters, but um, he really needs to work really and extra hard to make sure that uh, November 11 goes his way. Otherwise, this is very denting, I, I, I must say. Whether, what about the demands of NLC are true or not, but uh, maybe he could have handled it a little bit better. But let's see how it goes. November 11, there is going to be elections in Imo State. There's also going to be election in Kogi and then Bayelsa State on the same day. And for these, uh, INEC has been given a whopping 8 billion naira to prepare for the election in these three states. And people were asking the question, um, the 400 billion that was given to them in the first place, what did they use it for? And if they need to take another 8 billion for off-cycle elections, is that not ridiculous? There are a lot of things that came up that uh, people began to talk about, uh, one of which is uh, that the president is muting, is just uh, thinking about buying a yacht for himself, uh, in Abuja. I wonder what the yacht will be doing in Abuja or whether they will keep it in Lagos State for him to come and cruise anytime that he, he wants to cruise. Is that not supposed to be something personal if you want to buy a yacht or you want to cruise or you want to take a holiday? How many presidents even take holidays for that long that they need to go on a cruise? They need to rest um, on, you know, but a, but a, but a yacht for five billion the same amount of money that was uh, budgeted 
for education, for stu student loans, 5 billion for student loans, 5 billion for a yacht to be used in Abuja. I don't know how many rivers we have in Abuja that can, uh, the yacht can take, or whether it's going to be in Benue or Niger or Lagos State. Well, I will take a short break, and when we return, we will be looking at, or we will be listening to the stories of people who survived uh, sex trafficking. Stay with us. <laughs> 